Hi guys. Uh, so here is a uh, quick demo how to uh, set up OAuth. You know, uh, in Salesforce, uh, sometimes we would be uh, connecting our Salesforce Visual Force pages to access data from an external system. Like, it's a typical use case for integration, but uh, when we talk about integration, so there would be SOAP versus REST, how to parse the uh, JSON response, we talk about WSDL and stuff like that. Uh, but even before we uh, go into that, uh, there is something called authentication. The easiest way to authenticate to an external system is using the uh, API key. If you have uh, checked my previous video, so uh, there uh, I showed you how to use that API key to render Google Maps on a Visual Force page. Um, but what if you lose that uh, API key, uh, you know, uh, you could easily lose that, like someone could access that and, uh, you know, your app is uh, completely vulnerable uh, for access and uh, they can do all sorts of things. So uh, there is one more mechanism, a, a more enhanced uh, mechanism if you are aware of that, so that's called OAuth. So OAuth architecture, uh, there is a different story altogether. But uh, what happens is, uh, you know, from a Visual Force page, you do not get to directly access the data just because you have a API key. What will happen is the Visual Force page, so there would be a button, I will show you that demo. And it would redirect to the external website where you will actually log in. And then you will come back to Visual Force page so the, that application, it will redirect you to your Visual Force page and then you can do operations. So uh, let me show you uh, how what I'm talking about and uh, those those of you who are aware of OAuth, uh, you, would, uh, uh, you would already know this. So those who aren't, so uh, this video will help you to learn it very, very quickly. Okay, so... Uh, I am uh, taking, uh, you know, this example of uh, box.com. Uh, basically, uh, I have a system to integrate with, uh, and uh, they, have, uh, they have been using OAuth. So um, even though I looked at the URL, so it didn't quite feel right. And the last time I made OAuth-based integration, it was like three years back. So I've forgotten everything. So I searched for uh, some of the tools, uh, some of the links, and here is a very good article uh, by Sundog Interactive. So uh, they are a uh, you know service provider, the consultants basically. So very decent blog here. So I have taken the code from there, and you can uh, you know uh, go through the blog and read that also. But uh, video would be more helpful. You know I I am a guy who learns quickly from the videos, and uh, you know even if there is blog. So to uh, you know get that code and uh, and uh, paste it there, but still it wouldn't work. There would be some glitches here and there always. So that's why I like making videos so that I can, I can explain things better. So I just you know uh, copied that code from there and uh, I'm making this demo and I will explain you the code uh, how it works and what all these means. And there is some little changes. Uh, this is, uh, you know, like few years back, uh, this guy wrote the code, like in 2013. So there have been some changes in the uh, API and uh, little bit, very, very minor changes. Okay, so, uh, you know, let's uh, jump into the demo and uh, let's see how it looks like. So basically, box uh, it's like google drive basically so you can create folders you can create files you can upload your files to a folder stuff like that so i have a folder over here called sf content and uh, i'm going to list uh, the files that are inside that the file names basically okay so here's a visual force page i'll hit preview so this is you know uh, like copied from that blog so there is nothing fancy it's dead simple app so when i hit this button suppose we have a integration which is based on api key we would be able to you know directly get the content by now we wouldn't need to you know have a button over there but uh, you know it's a security gap if you lose the api like i said in the beginning on the video so your app is vulnerable to all kinds of access 
so now when I hit connect to box so you know it gives me this login screen so where I can actually log in right let's do that now if I authorize and then grant the access so now I am able to get the content you see that's the point you know the OAuth is much more secure than a you know having an API key so th that's the thing now this is my uh, you know the data from that folder so uh, I'm not sure if you can see anything so I'm getting the total count it means the list of entries there and the name is metadata visdal that is a file I will show you that so that uh, what's inside our folder exactly like that so metadata visdal we are able to list it over here so that's it folks uh, that's how you integrate uh, you know do the authentication for your integration I will quickly go through the code and you know it's very very dead simple like I said so there is nothing much there is a visual force page and there is a controller and there is a method okay and this is the controller so before you know you can uh, call that uh, box APIs from Salesforce so what you need is you need to create an application in box <coughs> so uh, if you go to box.com there sign up for that and then create an application like I have done here so name could be anything it's up to you and then it will create what is called client ID and then client secret okay these are the two things and then this is the next part uh, the redirect URL this is the tricky part if this is not in place so your integration wouldn't work so this would be as you can see it is nothing but the visual force page URL which is exactly what we have over here right force.com this is I have enabled my domain so for me it looks like this so for you it will be you know something uh, instead of this it will be uh, your uh, uh, salesforce I guess salesforce.ap4.visual.force.com or s something if you have enabled my domain you will see it like this and then there is visual.force.com and then my visual force page URL that's it so you have to copy it exactly like this and paste it here the redirect URL and then leave everything default nothing needs to be done over there so this is you know uh, if you have worked uh, with connected apps so when you want to expose Salesforce like uh, you know you want to expose its data so that it can be uh, consumed by an external system Java or Node.js maybe so you create an connected app there and there also exactly you follow the same pattern you create create client ID then client secret and then there will be redirect URL so that's what we have here okay and then um, you have to have the same configuration in our apex as well only then you will be able to invoke that uh, box api so if you have uh, done any kind of integration you would be very familiar with that if you have worked especially with the connected apps so in your client the uh, node.js client or the java client there you would need the client id and the client secret and then the redirect url so that's exactly the same pattern we are following here so in theory if I have uh, this client ID and client secret and instead of redirect URL if I have a local host and if I have node.js space setup for which the redirect URL is local host if I copy that local host over here you know it would exactly work like this exactly without any change but since our file the visual force page so you know uh, that file it exists in Salesforce which is not localhost so that's why we need a different redirect URL which exists in Salesforce and that's why we are having the same over here so that box it will after authentication it will redirect us to this page got it and then 
we will have the constructor so in the constructor when the when we invoke for the first time that time it will run so that time it it was null so it didn't do anything but uh, when it comes the next time after redirect so there will be something in the url so it it will look like this something like this so it will execute the else part okay and in else part we have get tokens so this is the method that would be executed and then over here we have uh, access token if it is not null so we'll be able to get box folder okay so now you know the authentication has already happened so this is the method which would be executed again in the constructor now let me show you how it looks like if i'm confusing you so like if i delete this and if i hit just the url so it will be nothing just the visual force and then the button would be there nothing else but if i click that it goes to box and then box redirects it to the same page now i have to grant access so next time when it is coming it, it is executing the else part okay and in the else part we have get box token so it makes another call out and then if it gets the access token which is this guy over here so here we are receiving the response and everything and uh, this access token is populated in this method parse oauth json which is over here so here the access token is populated right and then access token is nothing but a class variable so it's that simple now it is not null so we will be able to execute this method and it again makes a call out so now we are getting the contents from the folder so we give the uh, folder number over there so it's simple if you go to the folder you will have that number it's that one only exactly like that and then we get the items from there and then we assign it to a variable so the value to show variable which is this one and that is coupled to the visual force page and that's why we are able to see the contents of that folder nothing but the, just the file and all okay so uh, i hope uh, this video helps and if you have your integrations which deals with the oauth so uh, i will give you a hypothetical scenario like if someone has developed a java endpoint and they have uh, set up oauth so what they will need is they will need to provide you the uh, client id and client secret and then at their part the uh, third party developer part so th they would use the redirect url of this one you know sometimes some java developers are developing in web app and they want to expose their app so for testing purpose they will have just any redirect url but you know if they want to uh, if they want it to be integrated with salesforce their redirect url cannot be anything else other than this one otherwise the integration wouldn't work so do make a note of th those two things and uh, copy paste this code so it will work exactly like this so in any of the integration be it google drive or maybe custom integration client id client secret and then the redirect url and of course you know these methods would change not this one but uh, probably this one so how their integration is built so it will be something uh, you know a little bit of customization over there even the request method could also change it could be get type or how they support their integration so in this video we are covering the authentication part so that's there one more thing is uh, because this is making call outs several times so there are some uh, remote site settings you could have name credentials also here but uh, for simplicity purpose i have used just remote site settings so how many different urls being hit so those have to be mapped over here okay so uh, guys uh, thank you for your time and if you find this video interesting put a thumbs up and for more awesome videos like this do not forget to subscribe and i thank you for watching bye bye